Welcome back, Shaler Area, to the Physics Unit Note video number three for 8th grade Honor Science. Hope everybody's doing well, uh, and hope everybody remembers all the things about speed, because today we're going to be talking about graphing motion and what the speed look like on a graph. So we're going to get a little bit mathematical today. The most common form of a graph for motion is called a distance versus time graph. We will also in, in the future be looking at a speed versus time graph, but the most basic that we're going to start with is a distance versus time graph. And that means it's a graph that has distance on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. So if you can remember this is your dependent variable or your response variable. So the distance in this case is going to be your response variable, time, your independent variable. And on this particular graph, we have a horizontal straight line. So how you read one of these graphs? Well, the further up the y-axis that you go, then the further away from a reference point. Remember, it's all based on the reference point. So the further up the y-axis, the further away from the reference point you are getting. The further you are moving across the x-axis, that is the more amount of time that has taken place since you started recording. So distance on this side, time on this side. So in this graph, we have time passing because we're moving to the right, but the distance between the object and the reference point is not changing. So one way you can interpret this is that the object is at rest or not moving. Time is passing, but the distance between the reference point and the object is not moving. It's one of the reasons that you want to have a stationary reference point because kind of like in the uh, this two spaceship scenario question where both spaceships were moving at the same speed, this is actually what that would look like as well if your reference point was moving and the distance between you and the reference point was never changing, this graph would also look like that. So stationary reference points would mean that this object is most likely at rest. This object is moving. We can tell that it's moving because its distance between it and a reference point is changing over time. In fact, the distance is getting larger over time. So we can say that this object is moving away from the reference point. Now, the slope of a line gives you speed on a distance versus time graph. Because remember from math or from the ramp lab, slope is the change in y over the change in x, also known as the rise over the run. Well, if you're talking about this kind of a graph, then you have distance, which is y, over time, which is x, and remember the formula for speed is distance over time. So literally the slope of this line is the speed that the object is going. That means that a faster speed would be illustrated with a steeper slope. And since the line is straight, that means that the speed is constant. At any dot on this line, any point you choose, it's going to have the same exact slope as any other point. So the speed is never changing. The speed is constant. Here we have two objects that are both moving at the same time. They started at exactly the same point in time and they are both moving. But they are traveling different distances at different rates. So let's imagine that these were like two students running on the track in gym class two birds flying out of the same nest. Any scenario you want to put together with two objects that are moving. They're both moving away from a reference point and we can see that they have traveled the same distance in the end. Now, a lot of times if I were to ask students this question, how which one traveled further, people would often want to go with the solid line choice because it seems like it's gone further, but that's incorrect. Remember, distance is the y-axis measurement. So which line has traveled the furthest along the y-axis? Well, if we draw a line across, this isn't going to be totally accurate because I'm just drawing, but if we draw a line across, they both meet exactly the same height on the y-axis, which means they both traveled 
the same distance. The change between the two, what makes them different from each other, is that one did it in less time. The dashed line is steeper, which means it got to that, well, not what the dashed line means, that's just the key, but the dashed line is steeper, and the steepness, the steeper slope, means that it got to that distance in a smaller amount of time than this one did. So that means this one is moving faster. Since both lines are straight, they both had constant speeds, and the dash line achieved the same distance in a smaller amount of time, so it has a steeper slope and a faster speed. Well, here is a distance first time graph that has, instead of a straight line, it has a curve. So, if we were to look at a data point that was, say, right here, compared to a data point that was here, compared to a data point that was here, and we looked at the slopes of all of these, the slope of this data point would look like this, the slope of this data point would look like this, and the slope of this data point would look like this. So in this scenario, in this object, the slope is changing as we move through time. If the slope is changing, that means the speed is changing as we move through time. And if the speed is changing as we move through time, that means we are not moving at a constant speed, but instead we are accelerating. Acceleration occurs any time you change speeds. There's another thing too you're going to see in a second, but the, the first part of the definition is any change in speed is an acceleration. That doesn't mean an increase in speed only. Acceleration is any change in speed. So when an object slows down, it's also, that also means it's accelerating. A lot of students have the word acceleration in their vernacular to mean speeding up. But slowing down is a form of acceleration as well. So speeding up, uh, if you're speeding up, the line would curve up. If the line was curving down, you would be slowing down. The last and second part of the acceleration definition is if an object is changing direction, it is also accelerating. So acceleration is more than just a change of speed. Acceleration is actually, the best definition, is a change in velocity. Remember, velocity is the speed and direction of an object. So if you are changing the velocity of an object, that could mean that you're traveling at exactly the same speed that you were before. You've just turned a little bit and your direction has now changed. So if you were changing your direction but your speed was the same, you would still be technically accelerating. So the best definition for acceleration, a change in velocity. The formula for acceleration is acceleration equals speed final, which means the, the, the speed that the object is going when you're done taking your data, minus speed initial, which would mean the speed the object was going when you started taking your data, divided by the time that you, that, that spanned while you were taking your data. So we can figure out acceleration by doing, if, if it was on this graph, for example, we could have this point in, where's my line? Uh, we could have ah, this point in time and this point in time. Where's my, there we go. This would be the speed, this would be the speed. So if we calculated the slope of this one, that would be your final. The slope of this one would be your initial, divided by the time, which would be the distance on the x-axis between these two data points, and we would know the acceleration of this object in that time. So in summary, every change in slope of a line on a motion graph tells you a piece of a story about an object's actions. Every time you change slope, you are changing speed, and there might be a reason that you're changing speed. A curving line means that the object is getting faster or slower, and that's acceleration. A horizontal line means most likely that the object is standing still. A downward moving line 
means the object is moving towards the reference point. An upward moving line means an object is moving away from a reference point. So these are, this is a good thing if you want to star this maybe, and when you're studying, this kind of summarizes all of that stuff. So let's put some things into action here. We have three different lines. Let's label what's happening on the graph. This green line is moving at a fast, steady speed. It's fast because it has a very steep slope. It is steady and constant because the line is straight. And that's different from this one, which means it's accelerating because it's curved and it's getting faster every moment in time. It's traveling faster and faster and faster. The red line has some changes going on. In the beginning, it's, it's moving away from a reference point at a nice steady speed, and then it stops. And then it moves back towards the reference point at a steady speed, and if we look at the slopes, it's moving back towards the reference point slightly faster than it was moving away from the reference point. This slope is slightly more than this one. Even though it's in a negative direction, this would be a positive slope, negative slope, when you are actually thinking about speed, you kind of want to think about the absolute value of that. All right, so here is a graph. Um, use the slopes of the lines to try to label what's happening in the descriptions. And this is one of the quick checks. So um, there's several quick check questions here that we'll go over in class on quick check day. Um, which is probably the same day as the booby trap usually is. So uh, you kind of label what's happening in each of these lines very similar to what we just did before. In this quick check question, we have two track athletes, and you want to calculate the speed of each athlete and indicate which one is moving faster. So which one of these two athletes is running at a faster speed? Athlete A or athlete B. Reminder, speed is slope. And if you want to think about some things while you're doing this, think about what the significance of the starting points mean. That might show up in one of the booby trap questions. Here we have four graphs that are options. Which one of these would best depict a car that is slowing down? And finally, here we have a random kind of drawn graph that I just threw on here with a line. See if you can use this graph to tell a story. So I'll do one here for example, and there is an optional assignment that you can do that is called the motion story assignment. And there's a piece of paper that has a graph on it similar to this. And you have to write a creative story, so it's a creative writing assignment. Um, write a story that follows the graph. And on the actual um, motion story assignment, there's more than one line. So each line would kind of be its own character in your story. And when the lines would intersect, they would be at the same place in time. So they could have some kind of interaction. Um, so you could check that out. It's in the, uh, it's in the special mission folder and uh, see if anybody's interested in writing a story. So my story on this graph, uh, let's say my, both of my kids like cheetahs. So we'll pretend that, that I'm a cheetah. So I am a mother cheetah, and if my reference point was, say, the den where my cubs were staying, I am starting this story a little bit away from my den. So maybe I am crouched down in some high grass, keeping an eye on some animals that I would like to eat, maybe some zebra or some wildebeest or something smaller. Um, and I am waiting, and then time starts, when suddenly I see one that I think I can catch and kill. So as a cheetah, I accelerate very quickly. So there's a curving line here. So that means I'm accelerating. So from a stop, I accelerate and I get this far away. And we'll say right here, I pounce on the baby zebra and sink my teeth into its neck and break its neck and kill the baby zebra. Well, Cheetahs are very tired after they sprint like that. So I have to take a break. So I stop and I rest. All the other zebras run off. Then I've taken my little break. I want to get back to my cubs with my 
fresh kill, we'll call it breakfast. Um, but I hear a noise. I hear a noise from back in the direction of the den. So I start running back to the den and I'm accelerating now. Um, maybe I'm dragging the zebra with me, but maybe not because I'm accelerating pretty quickly. I don't think I could accelerate this. So I leave the zebra here based on the line here. I accelerate back to the den to see what all the noise is about. I get to my den, which would actually be here. Remember, this is the reference point, And I see that my babies aren't here. Well, I'm accelerating really fast now. See how much this is curved? It's almost straight down. I'm flying. And I realized that the noise was that my cubs were leaving the den. So I run past the den and catch up to them and I yell at them and Arr, growl, growl, chirp, chirp, chirp. I talk in cheetah language and, and I tell them, bad pups, you need to get back to the den. So this is the amount of time that I would stand there talking to them and yelling at them for misbehaving. And then we go at a steady speed, instead of accelerating now, we go at a steady speed back to the den. I drop my cubs off at the den and I return to the post that I started at to try to wait to make another kill because hyenas maybe came and stole the zebra that I left up here when I had to turn and run away. And then I'm waiting for the next opportunity. You could tell any story you wanted um, based on this graph as long as it had Accelerating away from a reference point, standing still. Accelerating back past the reference point, standing still. Constant speed, and then standing still. So any creative way that you would want to illustrate that would work just fine. Just make sure when you're writing one of these stories that you use every change in slope as a moment in your story because that's where the story gets told and the changes of what's happening. And that leads us to uh, booby trap number three. There are 15 questions. Good luck.